Hey there, this is Katie from KT and the Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the pixie bonnet. If you're new to my channel and you like all things crochet and yarn related, be sure to subscribe for more videos. So the pixie bonnet is a very popular pattern on my website. I'll insert some pictures here of cute little babies wearing them. This bonnet makes for a great baby shower gift or maybe you have a little one on the way. They work up super quick so if you need something last minute this is perfect. I think I made this one in probably less than half an hour and that was also by um, while I was recording this video. So let's grab our hooks and get started. For this project you will need worsted weight yarn. I am using the new Heatherly from We Crochet and Knit Picks. This is 100 grams and 218 yards per skein. One skein should be enough for all of the sizes. You also need a five millimeter hook, which is a size H, or hook to obtain gauge. So before you get started, you will need to make a gauge swatch. If you don't know how to make a gauge swatch, I will link to a video that explains pretty in depth how to make a gauge swatch before you get started. So I will be making the newborn size. If you are making any other size, be sure to reference the pattern for any differences in stitch counts or row counts. To start, we're going to chain 17. So I'm gonna put a slip knot on my hook and then I'm going to chain 17. So that's 17. Now we're going to start row one. So row one starts with a single crochet in the second chain from hook. So to do a, sec a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull for through two loops. Next you're going to do a double crochet into the next chain. So you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Then we're going to do a single crochet, next a double crochet, and you'll repeat that all the way across. So alternating between single crochet and double crochet until you get to the last chain. So you'll end with a double crochet in the last chain. So next we're, instead of turning like you normally would, you're not going to turn. Instead, you're going to continue to work across the opposite side of the foundation chain. So this side of the foundation chain. So instead of turning your work this way, you're going to turn it this way. So in this first chain, we're going to single crochet into this. It's basically the, first, the same chain that you did a double crochet into. So we're going to work a single crochet into that first chain. Next, you're going to double crochet into the next chain. And then you'll single crochet into the next chain and double crochet into the next. And again, you're going to repeat this all the way across. So you can see it kind of created a U shape around the foundation chain. So I'm going to repeat single crochet, double crochet all the way across until I get to the very last chain. So here I am at the last chain, so I'm going to double crochet into that last chain. Now you don't want to join or anything like that. So this is, I've completed, this is all row one. Now you'll want to stop and count your stitches for the newborn size. I should have 32 stitches. So to start row two, we're going to turn. And 
then we'll chain one. And it's basically the same as the first row. We're going to do single crochet, and double crochet, and repeat that all the way across. Single crochet, double crochet. So if you ever get lost where you are, you should always single crochet into a double crochet and double crochet into a single crochet. Um, a lot of people call this a lemon peel stitch, I believe. I've also heard it referred to as a moss stitch, but that can also mean something else. But it's simply single crochet, double crochet all the way across. And again, this is creating a, it's basically like a U shape around the starting chain. And when we're finished, where we went around the chain here, this part is going to end up on the very back of the head for the bonnet. And that'll make a little bit more sense the further on we get. Probably the hardest thing about this pattern is just that setup row. Because from here on out, you're just going to repeat row two. And for newborn size, you're going to go to row 12. And here's about what it should look like after row two. Um, here's our starting, our foundation chain is running through the middle and we're basically working a U shape around that starting chain. So we're gonna repeat row two until we have a total of 12 rows and I will come back when I have 12 rows. So here I am at the end of row 12. This is about what it'll look like. I also want to say if you're fairly new to crochet and find that it's hard to count your stitches, uh, you might find it a little bit helpful to have a stitch marker and before you get started on your 12 rows, just stick a stitch marker into the first row just so you know where to start counting for your 12 rows. It might be a little bit helpful. Also if you're wondering about this hook, I have a hook review on these hooks on my YouTube channel and I will link to that if you want to check it out. So for row 13 we're going to turn and chain one and now we are going to work a row of single crochet all the way across. So single crochet and then this will end up being the right side of your bonnet. So I'm just going to single crochet until I get to the end of this row. So this opening where we just single crocheted, that will be the opening of the bonnet. So the little baby's head will be facing out like that and then this part will be the bottom that goes around their neck. So to finish this off, you're not going to turn but you are going to rotate your bonnet 90 degrees this way if of course if you're left-handed you're going to be going the other way and then we're going to chain one and you're going to evenly work a row of slip stitches across the bottom um, I'm going to try and go about into every row it doesn't really matter how many stitches you have you just want to make sure it looks nice and neat and straight um, you probably need to add an extra slip stitch when you get to the end of a row that has a double crochet. So you'll probably have a little bit more than a slip stitch per row. So just try and keep it nice and even and straight like that. And it's just a nice little finishing to the bottom of the bonnet. Like I said, where you insert your hook doesn't really matter. What matters is that you keep it consistent so that it looks nice and neat. So 
So I made it to the end of the bottom of the bonnet, so now I'm just going to fasten off. And this isn't really explained in the pattern, but I'm going to show you how I um, finish this off just so it looks nice. This part, I mean, it really doesn't matter because this part is going to be covered by the little tie that we add, but I am going to finish it off just so it looks fairly neat. So I'm going to grab a, um, a needle and I'm just going to thread my needle and so this is the first single crochet of row 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook under, or my needle under the stitch like that. And then I'm going to go back through the middle of that last um, slip stitch. And you can see it just makes a nice little finishing. And then you can weave in your end and then we will start the tie. So to weave in my ends, I might as well just show you. I go through a length of stitches. Um, it's not quite an inch, but I just go through a length of stitches. And then I go back the other way. And as you're putting your needle through, if you can like kind of split pieces of yarn as you're going through, it's gonna be a little bit more secure. So I'll go back one time and then I'll go back another time. So I do one, two, three passes. Every time you change directions, the more secure your end is gonna be, but I find the one, two, three is secure enough. And then I just kind of pull it to make sure that it's in there nice and neatly, and then I'll just trim it off. And that's how I weave in all of my ends. So you'll also weave in the end that is in here. So again, this part is going to be the back of the head and then the end of row 13 is going to be the opening of the bonnet. And next we just need to add the little ties. Okay, so next we're going to add the braided ties. So to add the braided ties, you're going to measure, for each side, you're going to measure three pieces of yarn about a yard long. So to measure a yard, I just take the yarn and I I put the yarn in my hand and then I kind of stretch it out and put it to my nose and I know that's about a yard. So that's a good length. Um, you can trim it to whatever length you want after you add it. So with your three pieces of yarn, you're gonna fold them in half, creating a loop at the midway point. Next you're going to take your crochet hook, and this can be any size crochet hook. I'm just grabbing the same one that I used to make the um, hat. And you're going to insert it into this corner. And you're going to go from the wrong side to the right side. You're going to wrap the midway point, the loop that you created at the midway point of the yarn pieces. You're going to wrap that around your hook and pull it through. Then you're going to take the ends of the yarn and pull it through the loop that you created. And then you're just going to pull it tight to secure. And you can kind of fiddle around with this until it looks nice and neat. Then next, um, next what you're going to do is you're simply going to braid these. So You'll divide it into three sections of two, and then you'll just neatly braid it. Hopefully, you know how to braid. Hopefully, you know how to braid. So you just take uh, one side, bring it to the middle. The other side, bring it to the middle, and so on and so on. So if you if you want to keep this from sliding around. You can grab something with a little bit of weight and put it on top of the hat to keep it from sliding around so that you keep your braid nice and even. Sometimes what I do is I'll just I'll 
put it between my knees and hold it with my knees and then braid. So when I get to the end of the first braided tie, I'm actually, I'm not going to trim this yet, but I'm going to loosely tie a knot and I will just leave that for now. I'm going to repeat this on the other side and I'm going to wait until, so I'll wait to trim this until I've done the other side so that I can make sure to trim them both the same size. So I'll repeat this on the other side and I'll show you how I trim this. So I braided the other side and once you're done braiding the ties you want to decide about how long you're going to make them. I'm stopping right here um, and that is, it, it'll depend on what size hat you're making. I mean you can make them longer or shorter, it's really up to you. So this one, I'm going for about 10 inches here and that's probably good. So I'm going to tie a knot here and I'll make it nice and secure. Make sure everything's nice and even. And then what I'll do is I'll match up this other side to tie it about the same spot. So I'm gonna undo some of the braiding I did on this side. And I'll match it up to about there. I'll start by tying it a little bit loose and then tighten it up to match this other side, like that. And then the last step is to just trim these ends. And I'll leave, I don't know, maybe like about an inch and just trim them all even. Make sure I trim them about the same like that and then um, before you gift this or use the bonnet you will want to block your bonnet so it's ready to wear i will link to my favorite unscented wool wash which i think will work well with this um it depends on what yarn you're using if you're using 100 percent acrylic i just throw it in the wash with some gentle fabric or gentle uh, laundry detergent that's good for babies. Um, this one, this yarn actually is not machine washable. It's I have to hand wash it, so I will block it with some unscented wool wash. So I hope you enjoyed that video tutorial. If you are interested in more crochet tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.